Hi, I'm Misande. Arachnids are a wide group of arthropods that contain spiders, scorpions, ticks, mites, and a few other critters. In this video, our sleeping arachnids will start with a group of spiders. The planet you see on the screen is an Earth-like planet called Origin, which is where our story takes place. If you're afraid of spiders, you should probably click off now. Hopefully, you'll be into some of my other videos. Wolf spiders are a group of spiders that are agile hunters with incredible eyesight. They're unique for their ability to hear ish. They use vibration for communication, and they have sensitive structures to sense these vibrations, kinda like hearing. What if there was a group of spiders that had advanced hearing and vision? Well, on Origin, there was an animal that looked suspiciously similar to wolf spiders. It lived long before wolf spiders on Earth were ever around, 200 million years ago. It's the oldest modern spider ever discovered on Origin, preserved in amber. It seemed to have organs that could sense delicate vibrations. As time progressed, some of these animals focused on other things, but at least one surviving lineage continued to perfect their hearing. A hundred million years ago, a spider lived with small appendages derived from its jaw that they used for hearing vibrations through air. They're covered in fur to avoid heat loss and are relatively large for a spider. They lived in cold-ish environments and died in the winter after laying their eggs somewhere safe. Here's the final art. These spiders were a light gray color with brown patterns to blend in with their environment. They were hairy all over, but their ears were especially fluffy. They hunted in burrows and ambushed prey that got close. This prey was usually other arthropods, but it did eat small vertebrates as well. If in a pinch, they'd leave their burrow and look for food with their incredible hearing, which would often get them more food than just sitting in the burrow. So they began to evolve in this direction. 50 million years ago, these wolf spiders had evolved to grow quite large and hunt in packs. They had impeccable hearing to sense prey and powerful jaws to boot. They also began to develop a new sensory organ on their face for smell. It still wasn't quite advanced. They used their front pair of legs more like arms and focused on their back three for walking. This front pair grew huge claws for attacking, while the second pair that was on the ground had huge claws more for balance. This front heavy animal was vulnerable on its back but the rest of its pack minimized that weakness. Their fluffy fur protected them from the bitter cold, and they lived for many years. Here's the final art. These wolf spiders had bluish fur, which camouflaged them from the dusk snowfall. Their blood was red, so their skin and exoskeleton had that sort of tint to them. The largest ones were about a meter and a half long from tip of the front claw to end of the abdomen. They were about as smart as wolves on Earth and had complicated pack societies. Most packs had 6 to 10 individuals, but they could be anywhere from 2 up to 20. Although they're not the most threatening alone, they could take down large prey with a strong enough pack. Their claws were sharp, but they didn't do the trick for some armored animals because there wasn't exactly a lot of force behind them. The wolf spiders depended on their arm muscles to power their claws, and they didn't quite have the weight of its body behind them. This is how the wolf spider began to evolve into the lichens we're familiar with on origin. 20 million years ago, lichens looked very similar to how they look today. They were the first sapient life on origin, at least the first sapient life we know of. They used to be much more diverse than they are today, and lived all around the planet. Their front two limbs were claws used for attacking or object manipulation, and they had long walking legs to rear up on the hindmost pair and attack with powerful force. They had impeccable eyesight and hearing, just like they do today. They lived in large households with 6 to 20 people. If you were lichen, you most likely lived with not only your parents and siblings, but also aunts, uncles, cousins, and maybe even grandparents. Their lifespan was only about 50 years, and it seems like the culture of when to have children cycled from early to late, and back to early many times in their long history. Here's the final art. Lichens existed in many shapes and colors, and were more diverse than any animal alive today. They had a nose to sense smell, but it wasn't particularly sensitive. The diversity spanned from color and texture of hair and skin, to size and weight of their claws and the rest of their body. Lichens in the western continent were the second largest but had the largest claws. Lichens in the north were the largest and heaviest, while lichens in the east were generally the smallest, but had the most advanced technology. There were many more than just three races, but those were the general three continents. There is also a pronounced sexual dimorphism in this species, and all the species I've mentioned so far. What we've seen is the females, and the males are usually much smaller. 
For the lichens, the males aren't particularly smaller, but they are clawless and extremely rare. This was likely a large part of their downfall. Starting about 2 million years ago, other sapient species began to rise in origin. They had magic and were more agile than the now sedentary lichens. The once diverse lichens were reduced to where they now live, mostly contained to one small country. At one point, there were only 6,000 lichens left on the planet. There's a few hundred thousand now, but only the ones in the western continent survive. Almost 100% can trace their ancestry to an old walled city in what is now the city of Lycan in the north of the western continent. So they have many similar features. Curly, blue fur, and pink skin are considered Lycan characteristics by most people because other features are just so rare. They have huge claws that are better at fighting than much else. Here's the final art. There's an old Lycan tale about intelligent life that goes something like this. In the beginning of time, one person created the universe and all life in it. When she died, she split into two people. Those two people lived happy and full lives with all of creation, and then split into four. As the story goes, every time someone dies, two are reborn as a new little fraction of the universe. Whether they're Lycan, Nucius, human, or any other kind of person. This tale is the foundation of probably the least problematic religious belief system on origin, though a few have twisted it to mean that elders are more important due to them being a slightly larger fraction of the universe. This has turned into a bit of a joke though, especially in Lycan culture. Very few people actually take it seriously, and only those in a very deep echo chamber can get away with not becoming a public laughingstock. Like I mentioned before, male lichens are rare, specifically 1 in 100. Some might assume that this would exalt males in lichen society, but it does a bit of the opposite. On Earth, we know lichen to mean wolf or sometimes werewolf. On origin, it has a meaning aside from the people we've been talking about so far. Reproduction is not as big of a deal for lichens as it is for many other species. It's something that most lichens never think about, as it's something that is almost exclusively handled by their queen. We won't get into how that works, because honestly, I don't know either. Regardless, it has a huge effect on lichen culture. As we all hopefully know, love isn't about reproduction, and lichens express this in many different forms. Interspecies relationships are more common in lichens than on anyone else in origin. This sounds weird, but it's not too crazy on a planet with so many sapient species. It's like if your mom had eight eyes and twice as many limbs with giant claws. I don't know. Is this weird or kind of an interesting thought experiment to talk about? Well, here's another weird and or interesting sociological thought experiment about an imaginary alien culture that has to do with different meaning than the people we've been talking about so far. If you're a woman, perhaps traveling on origin, and someone calls you a lichen, what does that mean? You're not a weird spider creature? Well, unless you look like a weird spider creature, which, assuming you're watching this video on Earth, you should probably see a doctor, but it's probably not because of that. They're probably calling you a lichen because you're gay, or because that's what you're giving. If someone calls you a lichen, the standard practice is to punch them in the nose. However, the term has recently started being used by lesbians themselves, so maybe think twice before throwing a punch. Or punch them anyway, whatever you're into I guess. Well, uh, <laughs> that's how I've decided to wrap up this video. Actually, before you go, I've been introduced to another cool speculative evolution project in case you want more. This one isn't just a project you can watch, but if you're interested you can even participate and make your own speculative species. This project's called Sagan 4 and it's almost as old as I am. Since its founding in 2006, more than 100 people have contributed and you could be another one. Whether you're a pro artist or just starting out, you can contribute and improve your art at the same time. Links are in the description. Anyway, my next speculative evolution video will be about a zombie hive and it'll come out on Halloween. Consider subscribing and I hope to see you there!